this normal? My husband has a high sex drive. I do not. What should we do? My husband kept me up all last night, clapping cheeks. Went round after round after round after round after round. We finally went to sleep. He got an order to text me. We running that back today? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I need at least three days to recover from that session last night. Like, what do you mean? And then he gets mad at me. I'm not a problem. It's him. It's like every time he sees me, he's ready to go. Like, I could be in there making dinner. He'll try to find a way to ease me out of there and get me into the bedroom. I'm in there doing laundry. He'll come up behind me trying to get it in the laundry room. I'll be in there taking a poop out of nowhere. He'll come in there and try to put it in my face. Like, what is wrong with him? I'm not the problem. I'm not depriving him of sex. He just wants it all the time. I can't keep up. What should I do, y'all? Because at this point, I'm considering giving him a smash pass because it's that bad. Yeah, it's, it's that bad. I can't keep up with this guy. I don't know what else to do. Like, I'm tired. My cervix needs a break. Seriously. I'm about to run away. I'm seriously about to run away. I can't. I don't know what else to do. Let me know, y'all. Is this normal? This can't be normal. Because if it is, my God. I don't know what else to do, y'all. Mm-mm-mm. I just know I'm tired today. Because he kept me up all last night. I'm tired. And he wants to do it again. Heck no. I think I'll stay over at my mom's tonight. I'm not going back to that house. Mm-mm. <sighs> Send help. This is the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear, least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so that your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Hamashiach. Call Hulayim La, Abinawa Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakridash. Double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Akium out there on the highways and the byways. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Salutations to you speckled birds, you Israelite foreigners. And Shalom to the Akwaf sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say to do so. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I fear, least by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. And it's a lot of things that we can take from this precept, but basically for this lesson, you know, you women were told that a man is only supposed to lay with one woman. A man is supposed to only, you know, idolize one woman. A man is only supposed to cater to one woman. A man is supposed to put the woman on the pedestal. A man is supposed to do everything uh, in this society for a woman and a woman is supposed to do very little. Okay, and you're also told that if a man lusts or desires to have another woman, that's cheating. When again, there's no such thing as cheating and there's no such thing as a boyfriend and girlfriend. It's only husband and wife. Okay, and furthermore, uh, a man was built and made to have more than one uh, uh, lover, wife, concubine, however, however you want to state it. Okay. Because, you know, a man with uh, testosterone is supposed to lay down multiple seeds. OK, because a man can have a man has the capability to love, protect, provide, etc. For more than one woman. It's in a, it's in a man's structure, a man's DNA, a man's the way a man's built to have more than one woman to, to, to be with more than one woman. OK, period, man. And so for you to sit right here and state the fact that your man is basically wearing you out, okay? And, and you know, in this, in this uh, day and age, you know, uh, our people are made lesser and lesser. You know, every generation is lesser and lesser, okay? And we'll get the precept on that near the end of the lesson. Uh, but, you know, back in the old days, you know, you know, women couldn't handle. And furthermore, even now. 
no, I'm I'm not going to go into you know personal matters, but I've experienced this a lot. I, I have experienced this a lot, but you know, you women really can't handle us even now at at our weakest state. So imagine in the kingdom, you know, you're going to be tag tagging the other other woman in, okay, literally. So let's get a few precepts and we'll close out. But let's go to the book of First Kings because you know these things are coming back. You're going to be happy to have somebody to tag in in the very near future in the kingdom. You're going to be happy to get uh, uh, some rest from your husband, you know, to let that thing soak, you know, to let that thing repair. OK, because, again, you can't even handle us now in our less in our uh, lesser state in this captivity. So imagine in the kingdom, just imagine in the kingdom. man. You, you, you <laughs> So like, just imagine in the kingdom, man, if y'all can't handle us now, you know, I'm not going to go into detail, you know, and everything else, but just imagine in the kingdom, man, you're going to be happy to have sister wives. You're going to be happy to have somebody else lay with your, uh, y'all, it's like a y'all husband. It's the book of first Kings chapter 11, verse three. And he had 700 wives, princesses. Okay. 700 Israelite princess women. And 300 concubines, okay, 300 heathen concubines, which means concubine, which means lesser wife, okay? And there's not going to be, also too, let me let me uh, uh, state this fact, which is going to be truthful in the kingdom. The, the heathen women are not going to be treated the same way as an Israelite woman with her husband, okay? So let me just say that, point blank period, you know, the, the heathen women are not going to have the same comforts and uh, uh, privileges and uh, uh, liberties as you Israelite princesses. No. Okay. Cause also these concubines are going to be doing things uh, for you also hand and foot period, man. All right. And 300 concubines and his wives turned away his heart. So, you know, that's, that's a different subject for uh, a different lesson, but the matter of the point is this is going to be coming back. Okay, an Israelite man is going to have more than 700 wives, okay, in the kingdom. Because as we know, women outnumber men, all right? And that number seven just represents completion, all right? So we know in the kingdom, for sure, because we have to bring back a nation, it's like our nation, so we're going to have more than uh, uh, 700 wives. And also, too, as the lady stated in the, in the video, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him a hall pass, and you can't see, and the thing about the society, man, this, this place is wicked as hell, man. You women really, really, as, as it states in, in the scriptures too, you want to have uh, uh, control over your husband. You want to call the shots. But, you know, a man is supposed to have more than one woman. Okay? Because it comes to a, sort, a, a point of time when you're on your cycle that we can't even be around you. And everything that you women touch when you're on your cycle is uh, defiled for a certain amount of time. Okay, the bed that you're going to lay in, the, 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 the chairs or the couches that you're going to sit in at that time when you're on your cycle is going to be defiled at that certain time. Okay, we're not even, we're not even uh, allowed to touch you when you're on your cycle. Okay, so how was that fair to the man to, you know, to be sexually deprived uh, 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 from when you're on your cycle? And, you know, it's a thing for you women to go through for your cleansing process for your uh, uh, reproductive organ, okay? But, you know, to go back to the subject, Salakia, to go back to the subject of you talking about you're going to give them a hall pass, let's see Let's see what the, what the Bible says about, you know, that certain matter because you had women in the old days and we're going to go to Jacob's wives <clears throat> and, see, and see if they had a, uh, an attitude about giving, up, uh, giving their husband to another woman. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 30. I'm going to start off at verse 3. And she, okay, this is Rachel talking. And she, Rachel, said, Behold, my maid, Bahal, <coughs> so like you. And she said, Rachel, behold, my maid, Baal, go in on to her. So Rachel is telling Jacob, here, take my maid, lay popper, lay, lay down with her. Going on to her, and she shall bear on suck, and she shall bear upon my knees that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bill all her handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in on to her. So, you know, it's, it's a 
further more story to it, but we're going to keep it, you know, focused towards this lesson. So basically this uh, Rachel gave her maid to her husband and told Jacob because, you know, at the at the certain point she couldn't bear children for, for whatever reason. The Lord wasn't, you know, opening her womb up at, at that time. But she basically gave her maid or handmaid to Jacob to, to you know, to, to have children, but also, you know, said popper. Okay. And, and do you see women doing this now? Hell no. Do you see women in the truth going out and seeing a, a, a nice, pretty, you know, a discreet chase woman that's, hmm, this might be a good wife for my husband. And, you know, she might benefit the household. Let me let me talk to her real quick and see if she has a husband. Let me talk to her and see if she would like to be a sister wife and introduce her to my husband. Do you see sisters doing that right now in the truth? Hell no, man. And I'm not trying to, you know, bash any of you Aquaf because I know you Aquaf are really attempting to do uh, everything righteously in the eyes of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. But that's also something to think about. And it also that also takes away a lot of stress in the household too, you know. And I'm not telling you to go to go do it. You know, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai will direct you to do what you got to do. But I'm just, you know, bringing forth the examples that we had in, in our history. You know, if, if your husband. It's basically it's tearing your ass up. <laughs> if your husband is tearing your ass up and you can't take it, then what does that tell you, man? You need you need it. He need he needs another wife. If his testosterone is that high, and his sex drive is uh, 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 through the roof, and he's 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 leaving you sore, because that's what she's basically stating is that her 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 quiver is sore. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to go into detail, but Brothers, some brothers go through this with women. And again, I speak through personal experience, but let's continue. Uh, let's jump down to, uh, let's get another example. Let's jump to, down to uh, verse 9. Genesis chapter 30, verse 9. And it's like a Genesis chapter 30, verse 9. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, a troop cometh. And she called his name Gad. So, you know, as we see, I'm just using these as examples. You see, okay, uh, uh, the wives of Jacob literally giving Jacob their handmaids. Okay, literally saying here, you know, I, I've already, because Leah had already bared about, four children I want to say so I guess she was exhausted she wanted to break <laughs> she wanted to break from popping out baby so she said you know what here take you know my handmaid Zelpa and you know go in on to her make her a concubine pop her and bring forth me another child okay because these women understood you know uh, first and foremost that a man is you know is it, supposed to have more than one uh, uh, wife and also, too, that the man's DNA, the man's seed, was the most important thing. Okay? Period. Now, let's, let's continue. Let's Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to also show you something else. Instead of them arguing and fussing and fighting who's going to lay with the man, you know, they already made an, uh, an agreement, you know, to say, you lay with him tonight. You know, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But let's jump down to verses 14 to 16, same chapter, Genesis chapter 30. And Reuben went in. <clears throat> and Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, it is a small matter that thou has taken my husband and wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, therefore, he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrake. So they basically made an agreement over a mandrake. They said, you know what? You go ahead and lay with Jacob tonight and give me your son's mandrake. You know, let's, let's uh, uh, make a, uh, 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 what did they call it? Uh, Salakia. Uh, damn it. It's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't think. What is it? Uh, uh. I can't even think what I'm about to, it's on the tip of my tongue, man. Ah, 
if it comes to me, I'll say it, but it was Salakia. Um, verse 16. And Jacob came out the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come into me. So Leah basically walked up to Jacob when he came out the field and said, Hey, you must lay with me tonight. You must, you know, pop me. For surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes, and he lay with her that night. So it wasn't no feuding, it wasn't no jealousy, it wasn't no issues to basically discuss on who's going to lay with the, with, with the husband that night, man. And these things are coming back because, again, in the kingdom, you won't hear women saying stuff like this. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tapped out. This and that. No. You know, you'll get your pleasure that, that, that night that you lay with your husband and then, you know, he'll move on to the next one. You'll, you'll get time to heal and to, you know, to uh, soak that thing in uh, repair, man. You know, be restored, be be a a a hundred percent again, okay? Because again, the men in this generation are lesser than the men in the old days, man. Because uh, because again, you you don't have every man that has this type of status and this type of testosterone or sex drive to be able to put a woman through this uh as they see torture, but as we see pleasure, okay? Because, you know, as Israelite men, you know, we love, we love, and women too, we love sex, man. You know, just as it says in the, uh, the book of Exodus, man, when we, when we was being pressed in the land of Egypt, what we, we had a lot of sex. Okay, matter of fact, I'll read it. We had a lot of sex. I'll read it real quick, just for edification's sake. We had a lot of sex. The more the more they oppressed us, the more, the more we had uh, uh, children, man. Okay. Let me see. Bear with me. Uh, where is that at? Uh, okay, come. This is the book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they grieved. It's like, and they were grieved because of the children, because of the children of Israel. So the more, and also too, Salakia selects, uh, Salakia, <laughs> sex is a, uh, a natural stre a stress relief, man. It, it it relieves a lot of stress. You know, takes things off your off your chest for a certain amount of time. You know, it's actually you know uh, uh, valuable to you know indulge in sex, man. Again, it relieves stress. You know, tension, all that, man. You know, it's 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 not going to be a problem solver, but it also you know does you know put you at ease for a certain amount of time. Okay, but to go back uh, again, um. The children made in this generation, uh, they, they, they devalue more and more and more and more. Okay? So this is the book of 2nd Edris, chapter 5, 2nd Edris, chapter 5, starting off at verse 54. Consider thou therefore also how that ye are less of statue. Okay? Consider thou therefore also how that ye are less of stature than those that were before you. Because, you know, Again, with the, the GMO foods, all the chemicals put in the foods, okay, uh, uh, the chemtrails in the air, the uh, incisions that, that they put in our children from, from, the day that they, from the day that they come out the womb, you know, the, this, it's decreasing the, the, the value of our people, and especially the strength, okay, and also, you know, putting all types of estrogen in the food, too, that's, you know, decreasing the, the, uh, the value of testosterone in the man. Okay, it's making the, the each generation lesser and lesser. Verse 55. And so are they that come after you less than ye, as the creatures which now begin to be old and have passed over the strength of youth. And and that's what we're seeing, man. We're seeing uh uh look 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 at the mental of our nation. Look at the mental of the women, the men. Okay? Look look at uh you know when I when I looked at the kids, uh, you know, in, in in middle school and high school, they were smaller than us, man. When I was in middle school and high school, you know, we, we were big, you know, we were way, we were way, we were way bigger, you know. And it's the value now, you know, you know, me personally, you know, my kids, my kids are, uh, I'm about six five, my kids are taller than me, you know. And that just you know goes into the, uh, to you know, to me eating correctly and and doing what I had to do. But, you know, like I said, I'm 6'5", and my kids are taller than me. My kids are like 6'6", 6'7". 
you know. So hey, man, and and but you know, in 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 the uh, kingdom, we're not gonna have that issue, man. We're gonna be mighty men. So let's close out because the point is made. And you know, I don't want to to say I got something out of this video, but I felt this, you know, you know, uh, profitable to be discussed amongst the body. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 8. In that day shall Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble, okay, and he that is feeble among them, okay, because let's be honest, man, all the poison, all the chemicals, all the, you know, the GMO foods, the, you know, the, the fake foods, uh, everything that this man has done, you know, Esau, Edom, everything that this man has done has, you know, made our people feeble, made our people weak. OK, you know, just going going to the gym, working out and, you know, eating right and, you know, getting the the best of the worst and all that is, is not enough, man. We need new bodies, man. We need salvation. We need your about shimmy. I was trying to take this man out, man. OK. That is feeble among them at that day shall shall be as David. OK, because we know David was mighty, man. David was breaking, you know, uh, uh it's like his spears with his with his arms and jumping over walls, doing all types of stuff, killing thousands. Okay, David, David was a mighty man. Okay, shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as the Most High. So we're gonna be gods, man. Okay, so uh, imagine alone a woman like this, and you, I'm pretty sure you have other women. Brock the Yahweh. So like you, you have other women that probably have the same issue. So imagine in the kingdom if we only had one wife, man, you 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 be dead, man. You be dead, man. Shall be as the Most High, as the angel of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah before them. So hey, look, man. In the kingdom to come, you'll be at ease. You'll be tagging the other the other sister wives in. You know, you'll you'll be tapping out, and, and all that, man. Hey, man, it's it's we're gonna we're gonna be uh, gods, man. You're gonna have new bodies. You know, you're gonna be happy to have sister wives. You're gonna be happy to be in the position that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai made for you, man. Okay, righteous order is gonna be put back on the earth, man. So again, man, I don't want to write this out, man. I hope and I pray that uh, you know, you beloved. Akiyam wa Aqua, I've got something out of this lesson, man. You know, just, you know, something I felt that was valuable. But other than that, Koho Layam La, Abanawa Yahawa Bahashim, Yahawa Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash, Wafa Wada, Yahawa Bahashim, Yahawa Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash, for putting the spirit on me, my elder apostles, elder bishops, elders, brothers on down, for doing these epistles to enlighten you, to inform you, to edify you, and uplift you through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. May the blessing and election and protection be upon you and your household. Adawan, Ratazah, and to the next one. So with that, I'm just going to say, Shabbat Shalom. Where he'll come in there and try to put it in my face. Like, from that session last night like what do you mean and then he gets mad at me i'm not a problem it's him it's like every time he sees me he's ready to go like i could be in there making dinner he'll try to find a way to ease me out of there and get me into the bedroom i'm in there doing laundry he'll come up behind me trying to get it in the laundry room i'll be in there taking a poop out of nowhere he'll come in there and try to put it in my face Hey, that's a nasty, that's a nasty dude, man. Me, myself, personally, hey, man, go ahead and take your poop. I'm not coming there while you taking no poop and try to get something out of you. That's disgusting. Real talk. Point. I'm considering giving him a smash pass because it's that bad. Yeah, it's, it's that bad. Just let him get another wife, man. Get, him, get, get a sister wife. Shalom.